Welcome everyone to another episode for Deconstruction Friday and this week we are going to continue deconstructing something. The topic for this week is build context in Flutter. What is build context? What does it do? And what do we do with it? And that's what we're going to be deconstructing next. All right, hello folks and welcome to one more video where I'm going to be deconstructing a few things for you here. Now, you've been seeing a lot of build context along the courses all over Flutter. And it's one of those things that I have touched before, but I felt like it's important for me to re-explain or maybe dissect or maybe deconstruct a little bit further for you to understand. Plus, this was one of the questions that I received. To understand what a build context is, we need to look at this piece of code here, which you've seen many, many times. In fact, this code, if you've been following us, is from previous video. Okay, so it's very simple. We're returning a scaffold, which we pass the app bar object there to create our app bar, which we pass the text and so forth. We have color. And our body here, we actually call another widget we customize we created called person we pass all the parameters notice those are our name parameters to follow how flutter code is written pretty neat so this build function here is a type of widget which is required because we're returning a widget we've established that and usually this build function is override or overridden when we are creating a widget Right? Anything that extends or inherits from stateless or stateful widget, um, we are required to override a build method, which is a type widget. And obviously, every time we have to pass a build context. Now, let's understand this again, build context, what it is. Well, build context really answers two main questions, right? And when I say that, I'm talking about as things are happening in our application, there are two questions main question that has to be answered when we talk about build context, when we pass that build context around. Well, the first one is what is the deal with the interactivity or the interaction of this widget that we are building now with the parent widget? And we'll explain in a second here. And the second question, which is not very common really to talk about, is that the build context allow us to also get the screen size and a lot of other information about the widget, present widget, but also mainly about the parent widget or parent container. So our application will look like this. When we create our canvas, now our app, it's usually a blank screen as that. So we've seen that many times and we then create, again, use the widget builder there, build method and of course we pass the build context there to create for instance let's say a widget a could be anything okay and the same thing using the previous example we do when we call for instance this build here we expect to have something like this Paulo is shown we established that before also okay so that's what's happening and all the while the build context is being passed around why because it has all the information on how things are indeed laid out on our screen. That's why build content is very important because again, it has to answer before we put anything on the screen, it has to know, okay, where am I going in relation to my parent? In this case, Paulo Dishon, whose is his parent? Assuming that there's nothing around Paulo Dishon, maybe the parent's gonna be center, right? and the parent of center would be scaffold or maybe another container, doesn't matter. But it has to know exactly what is it or where is this widget located and other widgets around. And to know all that information, we need to pass a build context. So in summary, the build context knows exactly the context in which these widgets are in. That's it. Why? Because all the widgets that are being constructed, they need to know exactly who is the parent, where is the parent, how am I going to fit in within the constraints that I was given. In this case, there could be other widgets and so, and so forth. Okay? 
So that's why build context is very important. And you may have seen build context in not only in the build method, but also remember correct if you remember in the list view that builder in so many other widgets that have that build or builder method, you'll notice we have to pass the context. Now you know why. So if you graphically speaking, if we put together for instance, the layout of an application, this is what we would have, right? We're going to have my app at the top, you've seen that class, and then we have material app, which we then pass my home page, then we have the scaffold, and then inside of scaffold, we have app bar, and then inside of app bar, we have text and so forth. So the idea here is that at each level, if we look at all these colors, okay, all of these are indeed the context. So in this case, for instance, if we go down, we see the column, in fact, inside of the scaffold, right, we have that bluish color, that means that's the parent context, which knows all about the scaffold. So when we want to add an app bar, we are adding another, we have to pass in this case, some sort of a different context within it. So app bar is added, right? So it's inside of a scaffold, which is inside of my home page, which is inside the material app. Okay, inside of app bar, we have this text, which of course, when we create that ourselves, it will have its own context, right? Because it has to know exactly, okay, where do I stand within this realm of other widgets or parent widget, or in this case, just a container. Same thing, we see center there. It has its own widgets column, and within the column, we have two texts. So that's how context work, because as we are constructing these widgets within other widgets, which are within certain parameters, which means a container, really, it needs to know exactly where am I supposed to be and all the information that it needs so that it can fit in within. Okay, that's it. That's what a build context in a nutshell is. So context always is referencing the nearest context so it knows how to behave and render itself. Wonderful. And so we have very easily here dissected the context or build context class or object. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, you know what to do, go ahead and leave them in comment below. Also, if you have any topic you want me to cover to deconstruct, be it a small topic or a big topic, just go ahead and leave your suggestions down below and then I'll read them and put on the list. And then uh, at some point I will include in our Deconstruction Fridays. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to this channel as you see. Uh, there's a lot of great content that I think you would enjoy and also leave that thumbs up if you love this video as well as make sure to click on the little bell so that you're notified every time I create and post a new video. That way you don't miss out on anything. Thanks again for watching. Stay well, be well, and code well of course. I'll see you next time.